fantastic, it's Pumping Island! NYPD, the police stories of Dave and Frank Simpson by Marcus Waldo. Hi. Hey, how are you? So we're not recording yet. I don't have it recording yet. I just wanted to talk a few minutes before we went recording. Okay, that's good. Um, to, to go over some stuff. So how are you doing tonight anyway? So it's middle of the night over there, right? Yeah, it's uh, 1 a.m. Uh, oh, man. I'm sorry. I didn't realize. I could have done it earlier in the day, I guess. Um, but I guess whatever works for you. Yeah, it's, it's okay. No problem. Okay. So we're just gonna we're gonna make the Q and A casual. We're gonna have fun with it, you know. Uh, I want people to, you know, I talk a lot, but this is your, you know, this is your time. Uh, I'll ask some questions about the production and behind the scenes and stuff like that. And um, you know, like I said, this is your time to shine. Um, this will go. This is gonna be pre recorded, and we're gonna release this after your film block is shown mm -hmm. at the festival online. And, uh, yeah, so, I'm, you know, people that have questions, you know, are interested will be able to comment on this link afterwards and stuff like that. And uh, they'll also be able to vote for this project. You know, we have a bunch of different award categories that our committee is, you know, or not our committee, basically the audience is in control of voting for. So, yeah. you know, there's, there's a, a, bit, a wide a range a wide range, I should say. Sorry, I'm getting, I need to sleep myself. It's a lot earlier here um, of awards this year. Yeah, we don't sleep here at the fest. They're, we're pedal to the metal right now. We're only less than two weeks away. And uh, we have people coming from all over to the in-person events and, you know, last minute changes. And you just, it's just chaos, but it's exciting. Do you have a sound so. studio over there or from where you recording I mean oh, uh, where I'm actually I'm in my I'm in my office in my house I have a okay. backdrop behind me so you know because ah. behind me is absolute chaos okay. like <laughs> my felt yeah. we're like in the we're in the process of like decorating we're big into Halloween over here so uh, my house is like upside down plus I got like boxes of trophies and festival stuff and this is just so that publicly People aren't like roasting me about how my house looks. Okay, okay. Like, what's wrong with this guy? <laughs> but, you know, the movie industry, people are shallow. So, what, what can you say? Yeah. Um, but, anyways, uh, whenever, so what we're going to do is before we start, I'm going to have a countdown ticker. It will count down. I'll introduce uh, your film a little bit. And uh, then I'll basically I'll have you introduce yourself and, uh, your roles of, of the project, you know, what, you know, I know you've played characters in the film, but yeah. also you directed it, you wrote it, stuff like that, you know, so. Um, Charles, one question about the light. I can adjust the light a little bit, maybe if you like it, that it's maybe, because for me it's now a little bit dark, maybe it looks better. If I put it a little bit more to my side, you can try it. Uh, is it like this better or before was better? This looks good. This looks good. Okay. Yeah, this looks good. Okay. That's good. All right. So we. Anything else before we start? You know. Um, mm -hmm. No. It's okay. Oh. Go ahead. All right. Okay. Maybe one question: How you found me, or or how how you uh, yeah, how you got to my videos? Was it one of the Facebook um, sites? Or? It, I, it was probably a Facebook post. Um, in the early stages of uh, scouting for projects this year, we tried different tactics because a lot of the times you get certain films that are submitted through Film Freeway yeah. that are the, tip, the typical people, that the same people that know about your event will keep on submitting, which is nice because they trust us. But we wanted different filmmakers, so I started going through different film groups, and I happened to find your project, and, oh. you know, I got a kick out of it. And I was like, you know what? This guy seems like he's ambitious, and he wants to do stuff like this, and uh, Thanks. I think that other people might want to see your work. And, uh, you know, I reached out because 
a lot of people think I'm scam a uh, spam person when I originally reach out because they're like, who are you? Like some guy posted me in a group. I try to reach out to for him to submit, and he posted me in like a film group questioning like, is it normal for like a festival to scout out? Yeah, it is. On film on a uh, film freeway, they do it differently. You scout films through there, but right. I like reaching out on Facebook. I can see you. You can comment. It's a, it's a lot more personal. Yeah. I don't know. I, th I think it works. Okay. But yeah. All right. Let me do this. enjoyed the block with NYPD police stories of Dave and Frank Simpson, Simpson episode yeah. five faith heart um, it's a long title but uh, I think it was a very fun uh, inspirational project I should say for one main reason um, a lot of people out there one of your things that I read on film freeway Marcus was the idea that you had very limited equipment and yeah. you just went out and made things happen. And a big thing between, you know, about our film festival is we reach out to dreamers that are making it happen because too frequently people believe that you need certain cameras, certain teams of professionals per se, yeah. in order to make projects happen. And you went forth and did it. But before I, you know, gas you up, and uh, fill you up with all these uh, compliments. I want you to introduce yourself, let you know the world know who you are, what you did for this production behind the scenes, as well as in front of the camera. Well, what I can say, um, I would say that uh, I, I love to watch movies uh, since I was a kid. And I think uh, at one time in my life, I got to, uh, I don't know, too tired to just watch movies. I wanted to make movies. And when I was, I think, around 17 years old, 16, 17 years old, my father bought a camera. And so I started to play scenes from movies with a German dubbing. So it was more like a lip acting, what I did. And that's how I uh, yeah, got into it. When I was living in Thailand for almost eight years, I got paid to do this stuff. I worked as an extra, feature extra, support main, main model, uh, voiceover uh, talent and all the stuff. And um, I'm back in Germany now over six years and I don't do this anymore for money. I just do it for fun. So um, yeah, that's how I've created the series NYPD. Okay. So tell me, what made you want to create this series in particular? Uh, well, it's, it's a kind of a funny, funny story. Um, when uh, in 2019, I got fired from my job, from my day, from my full-time job. And uh, one, uh, it, was a, it was a Friday, and on Saturday, my father went out shopping, so I went out with him together and uh, I saw this baseball cap, NYPD, in the supermarket. And something inside of me said like, buy it, maybe you can do something with it. And a long time I didn't play anything in front of a camera. So I went back home, um, I took a nap and some voice in, in me said like, uh, wake up, drink two beers, open the camera and start to play something. So uh, that's how I have started to create uh, these uh, characters from Dave and uh, yeah, Frank Simpson. That's, that's how, how it has started. Well, you know what though, it's kind of, it's kind of funny that you say that because I spoke to, I speak to a bunch of different filmmakers and it's always a, a weird scenario how they come up with their ideas. I, I know a guy who, the, his best ideas come from when he's in the bathroom. I don't know what it is, <laughs> yeah. but his best ideas come when he's in the bathroom. Yeah. But, 
for, for me. And at, at the same time, at the same time with, uh, you know, you creating this concept, it seemed like it came at the right time in your life. You know, at a low point, you found something that, you know, from your childhood and on that brought you much joy with filmmaking yeah. and the love for art. And it kind of, you know, now you're doing it and you're continuing with various other episodes. So I guess this is, you know, it was like a saving grace, you know, for say. Yeah. Um, dur during this time, I can imagine it being a little challenging to put all the pieces together. Yeah. You know, was, what was the most challenging part? maybe to find the characters in, in the beginning because like I said I, I just woke up and, and uh, opened the camera and then uh, yeah I don't know um, I just got the baseball cap and then the t-shirt and uh, I thought like uh, maybe I can do it like this actor did it or this actor did it and I've put like pieces from different actors together for example uh, with, with Dave Simpson I thought like uh, a little bit about um, from Dump and Number uh, Jeff Daniels about his character a little bit and so I took a little bit from him and maybe Frank I took a little bit from my father how he is like more the uh, pessimistic guy you know not the positive guy the uh, yeah like 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 Dave is the uh, Dave is like the the opposite of Frank actually you don't see it in the scene because they are not in the scene but it's like a part of the final scene what you can see in the in the final movie it's not finished yet, but yeah. uh, that, it will be this year. Yeah, that's good. That's good to know um, for the viewers that want to continue following. Um, that was actually you brought up another another thing um, because in your production of what you originally you know created was this what you ultimately intended, or after post production and editing it together, you created something entirely different. Mm, I think it comes, uh, I mean, I didn't, for example, when I started to shooting the first episode, I didn't thought about, like, I would make, like, five episodes from it. It came after another thing and another thing and another thing, so, yeah, the ideas came on, and uh, my series is like an action comedy parody movie, so I take something from other movies and uh, make it a little bit more funny like the original ones so that the uh, yeah. audience can yeah enjoy it I, I think i think for example um when you feel down uh, for for me is it uh, it's, it's like this when you feel down you like to watch a comedy movie or action comedy movie because it makes you feel better after you watch the movie and that's what i try to do with this series so yeah. yeah, that was my initial reaction when I first seen uh, some of the material from this series. I was like, this is really funny. You know, you. It, it strikes a nerve. I really enjoyed it. Um, before we actually got on here, or you and I were talking, you're like, how did, how did you find me? Like this, how did you find a filmmaker from Germany randomly? Yeah. Like, <laughs> I mean, all different, you know, as a festival, we don't just, uh, you know, do the simple things like going through Film Freeway. We, we scout out films a lot of times. And, yeah. uh, I happened to come across one of your pro uh, projects uh, publicly, and I was like, "This guy's got some talent, and he, can, he shows Thank you. that you uh, you know you're willing to, to go outside the box, think outside the box, and uh, you know quirky lines. There's a lot of quirky lines throughout this series, <laughs> and uh, but that's I think really, it's very enjoyable. That's really and, good to uh, hear for me. Thank you very much, Charles. That's uh, thank you. Good. Very good. Um, so. That you have a unique part in this because, you know, there's a few different, myself, and I, yeah. I can speak for myself because I'm a director, writer, actor, and I act what I direct, but how do you do it? Because everybody does it differently. I'm crazy. I guess I got a split personality. <laughs> how do you differentiate directing yourself in front of people, like, you know, keeping the whole thing together? You know what do you what do you do in this process to balance? Mm, I think I drink a beer before. It makes me more relaxed. That's that's what. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, <laughs> I, I think I think um, yeah. Well, um, 
when I do the scene, when I act the scene and when I direct, I can switch from one role to another role because I have so many characters, like I say, in my soul. And um, when I, uh, yeah, give directions, I do it as myself, but when I act, I keep, uh, I, 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 I still have it, I still have it in me, the, the, the uh, character. I don't know how to say it differently. Yeah. 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 No, that, that makes sense. I mean, a lot of times, uh, for me, it's a selfish thing. Um, I have the vision in my head of what I want the project to be. And I could hire somebody else or have somebody else volunteer to do that, yeah. I guess, that title. But I just, I know what I want out of the project. Exactly, and that's why... And, uh, that's why uh, the, the directing stuff actually is, uh, yeah. You should do it. When you have an idea for a movie, you should di or you, you should write the script, you should direct, and maybe you should act in this one too, because you know what you want on the camera. You want you you know what you want that the audience can see. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, th I think so. What did you do for the casting process there? Did you just reach out to people you knew that would be interested <laughs> in doing it? Or you <laughs> like how did, what what happened? Um, no, yeah, like you said, just people I knew. Um, because the the thing is, or the sad thing is, um, everybody of my family they love movies, but uh, they don't like really to act in movies or or to, or to work on movies to do a movie. So they like the finished project. The, they like to watch it and then to uh, yeah say oh that was good that was bad blah 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 and uh, yeah what I can say I'm different so <laughs> I took the people who I took the people um, yeah like my brother or, or my wife and and uh, asked her to do the stuff with me and uh, I didn't really had like a, a casting call for this one because no one really no. liked to do this with me but uh, Maybe this will change in time. Maybe this will I believe it will change in time. Let me tell you something. When it, the way things started from a lot, a lot of perspectives of different filmmakers, they, they do what they can in the beginning. Yeah. They get people in roles that, you know, that are, they trust, whether they're their friends or their family members, yeah. and they put them in stuff. I can't tell you how many projects I, I film in my house, different scenes. My editor I've used for the last few films. And she's like, Charles, I, I think you need to do one of two things. She's like, either you start painting your walls different colors and putting up different, uh, you know, curtains or film somewhere else because you're double, triple dipping. And the same thing goes with some of the actors. Like, I, I find I found a trusted group of people that are friends yeah. that I believe in to, to do the roles. And over time, I'm like, you're casting them as different things. But once that those film started getting some traction and people started like liking the work you start getting other people wanting to volunteer their time or reach out and uh, I truly believe that's going to happen for you as well that you. more people are going to be like they're going to take what you're doing seriously so that they want to be a part of it because the one thing about actors I love them I'm an actor myself they don't want to be in projects that they don't believe are going to do anything you know you're going to film this uh, project in some guy's house and then they, they worry that, are you going to put it in festivals? Are you going to... Yeah, uh, exactly, exactly. I, I know that, distri yeah. Distribute it. And now things are so much easier than they were before. I mean, when I was a kid, which wasn't too many years ago, you really YouTube was just starting and stuff like that. But the idea that the, they have social media and there's self-distribution channels that people use now, you know, you can find casting groups online. Yeah. I mean, the world's a different place. And uh, it's, you know, it's inspirational. Like I said, when I found you and then I, you know, looked you up through Film Freeway and I'm, I'm like, this guy had a, a limited, limited resources to do what he had to do and he made it happen. And filmmakers from all over the world this year, especially with COVID and everything that's happened over the past few years, they made films using their cell phones. They made films, you know, in their in their homes, yeah. whatever way they could to tell their story. And uh, that's one of the things that's inspirational. 
that I want more people to stop, you know, being afraid to get things done. And, you know, if you've got a cast, mom and dad, your sister, brother, <laughs> whoever else, get them in there. As long as you get your story told, you know, that's what matters. Yeah. Um, without giving away too much, what's next for Dave and Frank Simpson's journey? In this movie? Or... Like beyond, because we, you know, the audience knows this is a series, so they're <clears throat> curious what's going to happen next. You know, it would be very cool if the whole movie could play on the big screen and if the shooting could be really in New York City with um, some famous actors in small parts and me as a main role. <laughs> that would be very cool. Um, you could, yeah, you could con continue the story. I mean, I have a cliffhanger in the, in the fifth uh, episode, but it's not about Dave and Frank, it's more about Al Hafe, the bad guy you can see in the, in the, in the scene. And, uh, well, let's see, let's see. Yeah. It keeps it open. I mean, it's it's uh, optimism. You're you're you're, keep, you're bringing the bar up high, which is great. Um, you know, filming in New York City is always a, a dream for a lot of filmmakers. Yeah, yeah. And it's it's not too far fetched to get somebody. You know, it just sometimes you just gotta beyond money. You gotta just yeah, of course. Get them to believe in what you're trying to sell. You know, yeah. believe in your work. And one of the big things that a lot of these actors or even uh, teams like to see is your project in festivals, that you're not just shelving stuff just for YouTube's sake. You know, yeah. a lot of filmmakers are solely YouTube filmmakers. And the sad part is there's so many talented YouTubers out there yeah. or YouTube filmmakers. But once your project is released, the, a lot of uh, film festivals, they have like, um, you know, special premieres where it has to be either a local premiere or a global premiere. And once it's, you know, released online, it, it kind of deads it at right, times. Right, right. So that's, that's something that you might want to do in the future before you go public with your that's, uh, projects. That's why I didn't uh, upload any, any scene of the fifth episode. So you have the first one on your festival. And I have, I think now already like a, around a 95 minutes a movie with the final scene it will be around like 120 minutes um, but there's no scene because of this what you said uh, on YouTube because I would like that uh, it comes on the film festival and that people can see it and uh, well like I said let's see what what happens yeah in the future yeah that's 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 a good I think that's a good I think like like I said YouTube is a and you know I'm not trying to have anyone copyright or whatever like bash me for saying this but i think that you know filmmakers should try to try with the film festival circuit yeah get into a few festivals and then if you want then put it on youtube because at least you know now you have some like not notches in your belt and you know youtube is there's so much content on there it's like hard to differentiate yeah but at least you know you have uh you know people that backed your film in a way um, looking back on your film you know you, you look at looking back on your project whether it's something that you wrote whether it's the way you directed something even the way you may have acted is there anything that you would do differently looking back mm. well maybe I would use a hair wick and not let you uh, grow my hair, you know, because <laughs> I have started the, the fifth episode in 2019. Uh, scene by scene, you can see how the hair grows over the characters. So for some characters, I think the shorter hair looks better as a long hair. So maybe I would have used a wig for some characters. That's good to know. Yeah, <laughs> it's relatable. I'll tell you that. I had a film where I had a beard, and you know we were filming out of you know a lot of people that aren't in filmmaking don't understand that. A lot of times you don't film chronologically. You know you yeah. might film yeah. the end of the movie in the middle of your shoot. True. And I had a gruely beard 
and it's actually opening night. Um, you, some of the audience that will, will pick stuff out, be like, this guy, he should have trimmed his beard a certain way. He should have like measured it, you know, but it's, it's interesting. All the, the continuity in film is extremely important. That's why you want to have someone on your set looking into all the things that you can't look into. And uh, yeah. thank God for script supervisors and thank God for continuity people because little things like, you know, an off color white shirt will throw someone off if it's from one scene to the next. Yeah, yeah. Or if you're fair skinned like me and you get sunburn from day to day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I, I, I had this experience too. <laughs> yeah, it makes a big difference. Um, so what advice would you give to people um, who are looking to get into filmmaking but don't know how to start? Oh, well, it's a good question. I'm not sure I, I know this. <laughs> Let's say, um, well, maybe start out like I did, you know, do some scenes, some, 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 some acts with, with, with your own camera, you know. Even like you said, with a mobile phone or something like this, try to to write a small story and 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 then play it, watch it, watch it again and again and again, see what was good, was what what uh, wasn't good, and try it again. I th I think like this. Yeah. Practice makes perfect. Mm -hmm. I like that. Yeah. You know, and you gotta try. You gotta be in it to win it. You know. So what is next for you? You know, as a filmmaker, I know you have a lot of what you're okay. what you're doing now. Like, what else are you up to? Well, when I have cut to and edit to the movie, by the way, I don't like it. I never liked this. I always have hated to cut and edit a movie because the thing is, like, when I shooting a scene, I have this with my small camera. I don't watch the scenes until in the evening when I'm back home. So maybe then I play the scenes again and, and I have to watch them again over and over again and cut them and I really don't like to edit a movie but when I did it for NYPD and I did some trailers, I have the trailer music or, or, or already I think in my head um, I think I would like to write a screenplay like I wrote you before maybe for a story uh, play in New York or Philadelphia I don't know. An underdog story. That would be cool, I think. It's so amazing that, uh, you know, filmmakers from overseas, they they want to, you know, film stuff here in the United States. I yeah. find it amazing. And, and a lot of us filmmakers here in the United States, they, we want to film in overseas. We want to go to Germany <laughs> or wherever. Because, right now you're in Germany. Because it's different, right. different, you know? It's, yeah, I think that's why. It looks yeah, different. Yeah, it's exciting. And that's... It, it's exciting because, you know, it's filmmakers from all over the world are connecting and they're, you know, discussing their projects. And a lot of our... A lot of our challenges or, or you know, most exciting moments on set are similar, you know, a lot of the things that we deal with are, are similar, similar circumstances, yeah. you know, from this production alone that you, you did, um, what is one of your most memorable experiences on set? Mm, memorable, let me see. Mm, uh, I don't know, maybe the day when it has started to snow, when we start the shooting without snow and then it starts, uh, has, uh, start to snow outside, that was actually very bad, <laughs> you know. Was it memorable for the reasons, like a happy memory? Because that doesn't, like, people don't know that weather yeah, when but, shooting is like the, a nightmare. The thing is, for the last scene, the final fight, um, I had to, you know, I had actually only time at the weekend, like 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 Saturdays, when I could shoot the, the movie because in the week I was working and my brothers they was rebuilding the, the house and the stuff, so I'm shooting the scene in the garden. So every week, when when I got to the set with all the stuff packed full in the car, and I I'm, I'm ready to shoot, and then it had start to rain, for example, or start to snow. That was that was really terrible because then I had to put everything back and then drive back home, and then next week 
So that was really bad in, in, the, in the winter time. Yeah, I think that. Yeah. Yeah, right. beyond that and the continuity, the equipment getting, you know. Yeah. I've had filmmakers literally tell me right out, like, um, dude, I'm not going out there in the rain. Just, yeah. just letting you know. Like, if it, ra if it rains, I walk. And you're like, but there's all these people here, you know, like yeah. they commuted to this destination. Yeah. But they don't care. And I, I, I understand that. That's why, you know, you got to look into all those, the little things are sometimes the most important, yeah. the weather and, you know, the safety of your actors. And, you know, with something like this is action. You guys did your own stunts and, uh, <laughs> yeah. you know, small, small, small stunts. Yeah. Yeah. Small stunts. But I'm sure like, in your mind, you're like, you know, I could, I could see where we can go with this, you yeah. know, in the future. Um, but it's all awesome. I'm excited uh, for you. I'm excited for what's to come for the story. And uh, like I said from the beginning, the inspiration that you went and did it and you did it with limited resources and you're continuing to do it and you're growing. And that's that's the most exciting stuff. Um and, uh, you know, for anybody out there who enjoyed this project, I urge you now to go out and vote. On our website, Catskill International Film Festival, we have a whole list of different award categories that Marcus, you may feel, deserves to win. So make sure you guys vote, vote, vote for NYPD. And uh, I don't know, Marcus, you got anything else you'd like to say and get off your chest before we... <sighs> let the world know well I don't know I don't know maybe maybe uh, I would like um, I don't know um, if Sylvester Stallone sees this please let me know if you do another Rocky movie <laughs> <laughs> awesome all right Marcus you have a great night over there get yeah. some rest people that don't know he's in Germany right now yeah I'm in New York there's a few hour delay. This is like, what, one o'clock in the morning? Yeah. That's dedication, people. Dedication. And we love it here at Catskill International Film Festival. Thank you. All right, Marcus, you have a great night. You too. Awesome. I thought that went good. It went uh, nice and smooth. Uh, <sighs> I hope I didn't bombard you. What, you feel nervous about it? A little bit, yes, I did. Because actually, this was the first. Nah, you'll be you'll, you'll be fine. This was the first interview actually for me. The, I, I did one like a long time ago, uh, but that was for, for for a Thai TV show, Waterfall Thailand. After the show, they did a small interview with me. But this actually was the first interview. It's my first film festival. You'll you'll do fine. You know what? I'll tell you this: a lot of film festivals you go to. I'm telling you, I just went to one in New Jersey and they, they, they don't even watch your film. I, the people that are interviewing don't see your projects a lot of times and they'll ask you general questions. They'll be like, you know, tell me your name and why you did this. Like they clearly didn't know your film or knew anything like, you know, they didn't ask anything that was in depth about the project. Yeah. And I like to ask other type of questions because because this is going to be online, we feel that filmmakers that want to participate, we want to make kind of dig a little deeper than the surface level. Um, Cause it keeps it entertaining and it keeps it uh, unique a little bit. So that's why, you know, I wanted to talk to you before a little bit before we started and yeah, after, absolutely. but I think you did fine. Trust me, you did fine. And I tell you, okay. I tell you afterwards, like, Hey, maybe this is a redo, but, um, I've, I've interviewed people before where like they don't talk or they're, they're like, <laughs> listen, I, no one wants to hear me talk. I'm just asking the questions, you know. So. I like to hear you talk. You know, when, when, you, when you post the videos on Facebook, it makes me that I want to come to your festival. So that's good. Yeah, I wish you could. Let, let me tell you something. <laughs> a lot of international film festivals, we got to figure this out for years to come because a lot of the international uh, yeah. filmmakers... They're having problem with visas or whatever. And because yeah. our venue, our venue a little bit, they gave us the okay go way too late. So international films, 
didn't have enough time really, you know, because they can't just jump over here. They need time. So like in the future with our, with our event, we need to like have adequate time for the international, because like the international people make our event. They, a lot of people in the United States, not to bash the United States, but they're like, there's so many film festivals here mm -hmm. that they will go to one in their backyard before traveling to a better one a few two hours away. Like in New York state alone, there's a ton of film film festivals, but I've been to a lot of them. And some of them are like a pull down screen and someone's, you know, in like a, a community hall. They're not like a movie theater or, yeah. you know, you know what I'm saying? So like, but people overseas, they see the difference because they're researching stuff and they're like, Whoa, this is an event I want to go to. Like this year we have people from Brazil, Taiwan, uh, uh, the UK, Italy, they're coming this year. Uh, Nigeria. I never thought we'd see people from Nigeria coming to be a part <laughs> of the festival. That's, that's exciting. That's awesome to me, you know, but maybe, you know what I mean? Like this is, you know, in the future, hopefully, you know, like you'll be able to yeah. come out here for another event, but I'm sure there's going to be festivals out your way too. I mean, I don't know how Germ what you know what they do in Germany as far as yeah, film the, the, festivals. They do stuff I, like this. I think I think uh, the German festivals they don't like my kind of movies. I'm, I mean, look, you found me. You like my movie. You like to show it, and I think because um, it's um, in my experience when I was living in Thailand and I went to castings and I got jobs. The most jobs or the best jobs I got with the Thais or with the Americans or with uh, Vietnamese and, and all the stuff. Uh, with the Germans, when I went to a casting for, for a German movie uh, shooting in Thailand, I didn't get this. They don't like me, you know. And so that's why actually I'm, I'm really grateful that you found me and gave me this chance that my movie plays at your festival. So, um, yeah, hopefully we can see us next time. Absolutely. Week. Yeah, absolutely. That'd be great. I mean, it's unfortunate, but you never know. Like, listen, castings, like, even here are crazy when they do castings. Like, I know a lot of people, even I, a few celebrities that I've worked with that have come to our events. There's, I don't know if you've ever seen, I don't know if it's big over there, but American Horror Story. Um, but Ma American Horror Story is like, it was like a big sensation for a few years. But one of the lead actresses was one of our celebrity guests at our festival. And mm -hmm. one of the things she said is, Hollywood wouldn't cast her in anything. They wouldn't do nothing with her because she had a specific look. She was, sh you know, short, whatever. You know, she was attractive or whatever. Yeah. But she ended up getting casted as Pepper in that series. But it was because she started creating her own content. She started writing her own scripts, casting herself, and, you know, doing a really high production value on her own productions. And then she sent it out to uh, casting directors to show this is what I could do because they wouldn't cast her for whatever shallow reasons. Oh, you're too old or you're too young or you don't have the leading man look. Like I've told, I've been told that too in castings that I, I'm a great character actor, which if you tell it to an actor, it's insulting because it means you're not leading man material. Mm -hmm. And every actor wants to be the lead. They don't want to just be the guy who steals the show for two seconds. They want to, Steal the show yeah, yeah. and run the show, you know. Yeah. But, but it is, you know, it is what it is, man. I, I more more opportunities will come. You just gotta push it out there. And honestly, on now that you're on Film Freeway, I don't know if you were on it before. No, if you I, go I, on there, there's actually a uh, lot of films festivals yeah. that are um, they're free to submit to. Like just like how some of us offer waivers. But even if they're not free, you can always do a copy and paste like email, like, and basically tell them, "Hey, I'm I'm looking to submit to your festival. You know, my budget, blah 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 blah." And you can write them, um, are, "Are you offering waivers?" And a lot of them will offer a free waiver, just like we did, yeah. to submit to their events, and it gets more, you know, eyes on your projects. I've done it before too because submitting is expensive. Oh, uh, yes. oh and yes! Oh yes! Oh yes! Some of them, some of the festival, even our festivals, expensive. Like for a lot of people, that's like there's some, and some of the filmmakers don't take it seriously. Like uh, we had a film 
send uh, like 70 bucks. They were the extended deadline and there was no file attached to their movie. So, or, so I'm like, Hey, you know, can you send us the, the your project, please? You know, can you send us the actual file? And they never responded till we already put up the schedule. And I said, unfortunately, yeah. we can't accept your front film now. It's too late. We, we couldn't view it. So like they, they gave us money for no reason. And it's, it's not, you know, people do dumb stuff like that. They, um, even yeah. when they pay. So, but anyways, I guess I'll let you get some sleep. You're going already probably about to jump in La La Land. Uh, no, not now. I mean, now I'm awake already. So I think I will drink one, two beers, maybe watch some of my scenes, maybe listen to music, maybe get new, new ideas for some scenes, something like this. I don't know. Late night hour, man. That's, that's when all the creative juices get flowing. <laughs> yeah. Especially got over there. You got the best beer, right? Over in Germany. Yeah, I mean, now we are off records, so this is Kronbacher. <laughs> <laughs> Over there, there's your endorsement for there, your endorsement yeah. <laughs> deal. All right, man, have okay. a good night. Yeah, you too. If you Ciao. ever, like I said, if you ever have any questions or comments or advice or you need someone on a, on a show or something digitally, you can always send out a, a message. I'm here on Facebook. Okay. We're Facebook official. Okay. I All right. I Have will. a good night. You too. Thank you very much, Charles. Bye. Thank you. Ah, oh, I must pinkel. Ah, oh, I must pinkel. <laughs>